We are talking the old ones, also known as HP Lovecraft's The Old Ones. And this is directed by Chad Ferrin and stars Robert Miano. Now this is actually a kind of um, spin-off, I guess, from the 2020 movie called The Deep Ones, which was also directed by Chad Ferrin and also starred Robert Miano. In fact, they actually play uh, a character with the same name, although I'm not sure if it's meant to be the actual same person because there's a little bit of inconsistency in regards to the timeline there but it is possible i suppose anyway the old ones obviously based on the works of uh hp lovecraft and this is a low budget kind of creature feature kind of cosmic horror i guess and um well let's give you a brief synopsis uh, initially focuses on these uh this father and son who are kind of fishing at this river bank and they fish out the body of a, a man, an older man, played by Robert Miano. And initially they think he's dead, but he appears to be alive. And in actual fact, he is a sailor from the 19th century who has been possessed by a kind of the uh, the spirit, so to speak, of an, an old one. And whilst he was possessed, he is effectively immortal. Now he's managed to escape that and now is kind of more or less kind of just human. And uh, they're attacked by these kind of, you know, monsters. And uh, the father is killed. So this teenager and Robert Miano's character kind of go on the run, trying to find a way to effectively um, get themselves out of trouble. The plan being that uh, they, this Robert Miano's character wants to kind of go back in time and never kind of go out on his doomed voyage, which ended up getting him possessed. And therefore... Uh, never kind of running across the path of this boy, who would which would then inevitably save his father. Along the way, they encounter various different characters. They're pursued by uh, a cult of Dagon. Chaos and shoes. What will happen? You'll have to watch the movie to find out. So let's discuss. So this is a low-budget movie, and one of the production companies involved, amusingly, is called Crappy Productions, or something like that, which... Uh, I found quite amusing um, but anyway um, and this movie yeah it's kind of uh, maybe a little bit crappy you know who's to say but what does work in the old ones well if you like monsters if you like creature features if you like low budget VFX then this is the movie for you because this movie is full of them now the deep ones which was the kind of the precursor to this I didn't think had all that many kind of effect shots in regards to the monsters this one's got tons so uh we're treated to a variety of practical vfx uh monster attacks various kind of uh aquatic themed creatures and stuff like that and it's a lot of fun when we kind of have these uh tentacled beasts and kind of fish like monsters and kind of attacking and and fighting them and stuff which i thought was um you know it's a lower budget effects but you know, if you're watching this channel, I'm sure you appreciate some kind of uh, low-budget VFX, but they're quite fun VFX. You have seen, I think they do reuse uh, some kind of makeup and costumes from the deep ones, to be fair. But there are some kind of new ones involved, and I have to say, they're, they're kind of a lot of fun. The movie has a kind of a lighter tone, and it's almost a somewhat of a fish-out-of-water uh, story. So, so it does have some kind of comedic kind of touches and um I, I quite like if you kind of look at the movie through through the eyes of this kind of teenage lad who's now kind of caught up in all this you know he doesn't know what the hell's going on he's completely kind of clueless to the kind of the world that is he's discovered around him and it's kind of it's quite a kind of a fun adventure in many ways um and we do come across a, a cast of kind of kooky characters and um you know uh, plenty of mythology in this one so this, this, the plot of this one's relatively, um, you know, dense, I, I guess you would say. It's not, maybe not cerebral is the word I would use, but it's certainly dense. There's a lot kind of going on. The movie ultimately, if we boil it down, is a, is a series of fetch quests with a kind of uh, uh, the conclusion at the end. But on the way, we got, we obviously we do end up meeting a variety of different characters and locations, so it does have some kind of variety in it and i quite like the relationship between our two kind of central kind of protagonists i thought that was quite fun uh so so what doesn't work in this movie um i, I think the the actual plot is a little muddled i think they kind of 
breeze over some kind of uh, details because it's it, ultimately there's quite a lot of dense lore they're trying to kind of pack in here and uh, I, I don't think it's particularly kind of um, digestible for for some let me just say that so I think the, the plot can be a little bit kind of uh, if you're looking at the minutia of the detail it's a little bit kind of um, confused I would suggest now if you look at the broad strokes this is what they're kind of doing you know that they're effectively trying to uh, get this guy to go back in time you can kind of look you know just look at the basics but if you look at the minutia I think it, try, it ends up being a little convoluted if I'm honest the movie is very cheap and um, this is why I was laughing at the production uh, house to be honest with you and it does feel very cheap at times um, the just the general kind of production of this movie it does not have a high production value uh, and, the, and the budget uh, does kind of show through. Um, the, the VFX, like I've said, I, I quite enjoy them, but no one's going to be kind of like winning uh, any uh, Academy Awards for VFX on this one. They're, they're, they're kind of like, you know, cheaper gore style effects, if that makes sense. Um, I think the acting, um, again, it's somewhat of a, a lighter tone. Uh, and a little bit of a knowingly campy, but it's it comes across as a little bit camp at times, a little bit kind of cheesy. Um, I think there are some technical issues with this movie. Quite a lot of the time when we have our characters who are possessed by a deep one or some type of, um, you know, entity, they have like a, a reverb on their voice. And I could not understand what they were saying. Uh, so I lost a lot of the dialogue in, in this movie because I couldn't understand. They've just kind of messed around with the, the voices to, to make them sound otherworldly, but they're not going to affect us. They're really difficult to understand. Which is the and then the next point is this is a very dialogue-driven movie compared to um, so again to the deep ones. If, if you use that as a comparison, even though this has more monster effects than the deep one, it's, it's very very dialogue-driven. A lot of exposition is given. A lot of explaining to the audience um, and again I, I think maybe some of the kind of the the plot elements will get lost I think some of the dialogue is lost purely because the audio isn't particularly strong because of this damn reverb that they've used and things like that uh, and there are some scenes which like for example they go to this this guy in like a junkyard or something and there's these they call them vampires running around they, they, they look like just guys in Halloween masks it's a little bit silly at times um, I think the overall, this movie felt like it should have been uh, either simplified expand, or expanded upon or something like that to make it more of an, an, an engaging storyline. As it stands at the moment, I think that this storyline isn't particularly engaging because it either rushes through stuff or, or kind of, it, it, it feels like um, they're just talking gobbledygook a lot of the time. Those of you who are a hardcore into HP Lovecraft may appreciate it, but again, if you're thinking about that, a wider audience, I just don't think it it does the work in kind of setting the world, uh, kind of so to speak. Uh, I don't think this is actually as strong as the deep ones, if I'm completely honest with you. Um, the, uh, so this one I'm going to give a four out of ten. It's a slightly below average kind of low budget movie. Not terrible. It's, it's worth a watch. And as I do, and as I say, the creature effects are plentiful and fun to look at. And there's kind of a, a fun relationship between our two protagonists. But I, I think the uh, their overall story is not as gripping. And uh, the narrative is, is, is a little muddled and lost. And, uh, yeah, it, it kind of looks a little bit too cheap. Four out of ten, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.